Hello, it is Monday, April 18th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle, so it should be a gentle solve today. I hope so, after a long Sunday solve and a very difficult Saturday solve. This edition of the Daily Solve is brought to us by Joseph Schwalbach, Overfull Hitbox, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to all four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. You can join their ranks and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug at patreon.com slash daily solve. And if you back the Patreon campaign at any level, you get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the Patreon feed to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So enjoy those. And as I mentioned yesterday, we have up on there the uh, most recent Constructor's Corner uh, solve of several community-created crosswords. We have the most recent Boss Words Spring Themeless League competition puzzle and the latest mini puzzle speed solve. So all sorts of things went up over the weekend. And uh, do subscribe to the channel if you would like to do so. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who has. And let's move on to today's puzzle, the Monday puzzle. Uh, this was constructed by Carl Larson, who has constructed a small handful of puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. And I can see some circled cells, so something thematic. We do have a theme today. It's a Monday puzzle, so a themed puzzle. Um, but I don't yet know what it is. Looks like words that have been split apart in some way, perhaps. Scotch blank, 3M product. Scotch tape, an adhesive tape. Excuse me, adhesive tape. Uh, to completely wreck... A car, for instance, could be to total it. And early calculators are abaci, adding machines. Singular abacus. Black tea variety. Oh, pico tea? Is that right? Let's check the crosses on that. To do as one's told is to obey. Uh, to go strolling is to take a walk. Ah, and we see the circled cells here are spelling talk. So, yeah, don't really know what that means yet, but it looks like we have... We started to engage with the theme in some way. A squirrel's stash. A squirrel could have a stash of acorns. And to use as a towel at the shore could be to lie on the towel at the shore, I suppose. You've got to be kidding. Reaction is an eye roll. And to declare invalid as a marriage is to annul that marriage, to invalidate it. Film with the line, you're going to need a bigger boat. That would be Jaws, Steven Spielberg film Jaws. And Miley Cyrus's party in the, I don't know, I'm guessing USA based on the number of letters and the fill and the, the cross with that A. That's my guess, but let's, let's double check. Olympic martial arts since 1964, a judo, presumably, if USA is correct. And if one is sailing the ocean, one is a, a sea, one is at sea, a sea. Airline with its main hub in Atlanta must be Delta Airlines. And like many Chardonnay barrels, oaken, I would think, oak barrels, they're oaken, made of oak. And here we have sub at an office, could be a temp, temporary worker. OBGYNs and 36 downs, 36 down looks like sinus specialist for short, so that'll be ENT. These will both be MDs for medical doctors, so we can fill those in. ENT for ear, nose, and throat specialist. Okay, what about this other theme clue here? Outdoor concert stage. A bandstand? Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we have talk in take a walk and band in bandstand. Oh, that's funny because in this case, band is already part of this word to begin with. It's probably, probably doesn't in itself mean anything. It's just sort of interesting. Okay, let's go back to the crosses here. Apt rhyme for slams. Whams? I don't know. Let's see if that helps at all. Brings to a close. Yeah, that could be right. Wraps up. You bring something to a close, you wrap it up. Sweetie could be Hun, a pet name for a partner. Warmer than freezing on the Celsius scale. Um, maybe this isn't bandstand because on the Celsius scale, warmer than warmer than freezing would be above zero. So let's see. Band. So if that weren't bandstand, that would probably be better because then we wouldn't have that band repeated, which would be sort of odd. So what is this? Uh, let me make sure above zero is correct. 
two-finger victory sign, the V for victory, and one end of a battery could be an anode. A Roomba or an auto mower is a robot. Uh, I haven't heard of auto mower, but I can imagine what it is based on the name. Metal for a girder would be steel. Okay, so this certainly is not bandstand, so that's good. One posing for an artist is a model. Oh, is it a, a band's well? No. Band shell? What's blank name? What's his name or what's her name? And the canal to the Red Sea, the Suez Canal, so this would be what's her name. Fuss in front of a mirror is preen. Okay, so this is interesting. Band shell. And that creates ball. So that's funny that band stand and band shell, the correct answer, both sort of worked in terms of creating an additional word in the circled cells, but no band shell. I don't think I'm familiar with the term band shell, but my, my skepticism about band being spelled both in the main clue and also the circled letters being a bit fishy was, I guess, justified. So that's, that's good. Here we have genetic messenger RNA ribonucleic acid and... I don't think so. It could be nah. And you could spell that N-A-W, sometimes C, but more commonly N-A-H. And that looks better with the crosses anyway. Turnpike feature made obsolescent by electronic passes, a toll booth. So a turnpike would be a, a highway with a paid toll. And uh, the paid toll booths with people collecting tolls, I mean, I haven't regularly driven a car in a decade or so, so I don't really know. But um Presumably, those are largely gone and replaced by... I think they often are... Also use your license plate, maybe? License plate photography? Anyway, let's keep going. Blank cake, ring-shaped dessert, a bunt cake. And a doozy could be a lulu. This is a slightly archaic slang phrase, meaning that was just a great one. That was a lulu, a doozy. And doozy is also slightly archaic. And so often especially with slang terms in the New York Times crossword, you'll match the tone of the clue to the tone of the answer. So doozy and lulu are both maybe slightly quaint terms at this point, and so they, they kind of match each other in that respect. Garland gift in Hawaii would be a lei, flower garland. Immunity tokens on Survivor. Hmm. Never, I've never actually seen Survivor. That was one of the one of the sort of first modern reality shows, I guess. Um, but I don't know what this is. It looks like idols, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, ideas makes even less sense. Maybe it is idols. Is it a little sort of totem, that kind of thing? Maybe it is. Slimy stuff is goo. Blackish co-star Tracy Ross. Oh, right. Um, I can picture this person in my head. Allie or Alan, maybe? Let's check this. Stiff test. Stiff test. Oh, challenge. Oh, right. That was a real challenge. That was a, a stiff test. Oh, Ellen. Tracy Ellen Ross or Ellie, Ellie Ross, maybe? I don't know. This does look like idols after all. And 35 millimeter camera type in brief is SLR, single lens reflex. Um, metal for a girder could be, you could have an iron girder. So this does look like Ellie. I'll just wait and get the crosses on the 51 across eventually. If one is carried, one is born. Born on the on the wings of eagles. A tournament favorite could be what? Is that one seed? Is that what that means? I'm never very confident about the, this sort of terminology. I'm sort of... So let's check the crosses. Menu bar option. Edit. Edit menu. In a piece of software. And Easter egg colorings are dyes. We're one day late with that clue. Skillful with home repairs could be handy. Okay, so one seed might be correct. Actress McDowell, Andy McDowell, oops. One ups could be beats, as in you you beat somebody at a game, you one up to them. Uh, post OR stop, post operating room stop is rehab. And we have another we have that exact same clue here. That's funny, but let's just let's close this out first. So wildly absurd colloquially could be insane. And then unresolved. Oh, here we go. Here's our revealer. In its complete its uh, most classical location, as predicted by Lyle's law. Um, the revealer being the uh, answer that ties together all of the, the thematic material that we've either already put into the grid or that we're in the process of putting into the grid and sort of explains what's going on. And 
Daily Sol viewer Lyle pointed out that the revealer does tend to be located in the across clues um, towards the end of the puzzle. And I think most commonly, actually, it is exactly three cells up from the southern border of the puzzle, which this one is as well. So uh, perfectly placed here. Anyway, unresolved details. And a hint. Oh, so this is probably isn't beats, but rather bests. You one up to somebody, you bested them. Okay. So loose ends are unresolved details. And a hint to this puzzle's circled letters. Loose ends. Why don't I see what this means? So we have talk, ball, change. I mean, these are the ends of the words. Tooth. Why do I not see what this is? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to determine the meaning meaning of the. Oh, 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 I see. So loose talk, loose ball, or maybe not, loose change, loose ball. Does that, is that something? Loose tooth, that works. This ball is throwing me. So loose ends. So these are words that can end the word loose, and they're also sort of loose ends of these words, right? They're sort of separated. They're loose a bit. Loose change. So I see all of them except for ball. Loose ball. Is that a... Is that a baseball phrase or something? I have no idea. Sorry. Uh, let's let's check this one. Gel-filled NyQuil offerings. Um, I'm not sure. It'll be medication of some kind. Let's just finish the puzzle normally. See what happens. Ride that's hailed as a cab. You could hail a cab. A weeder's tool could be a hoe doing some gardening. Even Stephen equal in some way. Legacy ISP, legacy internet service provider. This would be AOL, America, America Online, which I guess it, I have no idea if it still exists, to be honest with you. Here we have sings with a lot of, sings out with a lot of power, belts out. Uh, letter after sigma is tau. Ticket graining, gaining, granting access to the slopes would be a ski pass, the ski slopes. And sushi bar drink would be sake. A prefix for green in the environmental sense would be eco. And a Warsaw resident is a Pole, a resident of Poland. Writer Edgar Allan Poe. Is it Allen or Allen? I think it's with an E. No, it's not. It's with an A. Start of poker pot is to ante uh, your money. Gotcha. I see. Tiebreakers in hoops. Uh, overtimes, I suppose. OTs, overtimes. Where to buy shares of GM. Uh, GM General Motors, the American auto manufacturer. So the New York Stock Exchange, I would think, NYSE. Spring Bloom is a peony type of flower. And gel fill NyQuil offerings. Oh, liquid caps, I suppose. Wow. Well, I bet that's a debut in the New York Times crossword. And so the extra word there is lips. And yes, loose lips is indeed a phrase. Okay. So loose ball just must be, it must be a phrase and it's just one with which I'm unfamiliar. That's fine. Even Steven could be all square. Traffic signal could be a light, a traffic light. Post OR stop, ICU, the intensive care unit. So we have our, what was the other one? We had rehab and the ICU, both uh, two different post OR stops. Chef De Laurentiis of the Food Network, uh, Giada, I think De Laurentiis is a, is a chef maybe. I think that's right. Stag's mate could be a doe, a deer, uh, a female deer. Subs at a deli, heroes, uh, another word for a sort of submarine sandwich, and a big obstacle, big obstacles at a golf course are trees, I suppose. And then if one is less welcoming to somebody, one is icier. There we go. All right. So we had our, we had our loose ends theme and our loose ends were loose talk, a loose ball, loose change, loose tooth, and loose lips. So a nice, tidy Monday theme, and one that, as is often the case with our early early week themes, we didn't really need to understand the theme in order to fill out the puzzle, including the theme answers. You just solve the clues as normal. Go strolling is to take a walk. You don't need to know why T-A-L-K are circled. 
But eventually, we find the revealer, and we learn why. And I think the rest of the puzzle was reasonably gentle. Um, yeah, let me know how you fared uh, with that one. And I suppose that's it. I'll just go ahead and move on for now. Let's discuss. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, uh, as is often the case with yesterday having been a Sunday puzzle, we actually have quite a few clues from yesterday to discuss. That does tend to be the case because it is quite a big grid. So, uh, life is boss. Corrected me. Uh, I was wondering, is Hansel and Gretel, which was referenced in yesterday's puzzle, is that Hans Christian Andersen? And Life is Boss says, no, Hansel and Gretel is a brother's grim tale. And that's one of those things where I don't I don't even know why I said Hans Christian Andersen, because I'm pretty sure I did know that Hansel and Gretel was br brother's grim, and it certainly feels more brother's grim. So I don't know. Just had a moment. But thank you, Life is Boss, for correcting me. Now, here's something I definitely did not know. Bit and Brush says a beer mile, also referenced in yesterday's puzzle, is a race where the participants drink an entire beer, then run a quarter mile lap around a track. They do this four times to complete the beer mile. It seems more entertaining to be a spectator. Yes, I would say so. I think I would rather watch that than participate. Uh, Daniel A. Miller responded to my confusion around the apparent brand name Limerita because I thought, well, doesn't it? Margarita already have lime in it? What would a limerita be? And Daniel A. Miller explains, Limeritas is a specific brand of canned margarita flavored malt liquor made by AB InBev. Real margaritas do indeed contain lime juice along with tequila and orange liqueur and sometimes additional sweeteners like agave nectar or simple syrup. Though I find the orange liqueur, provi orange liqueur provides enough sweetness on its own for my personal taste. I agree. I think you don't need the sweetener. You can do with a just a Cointreau or a triple sec or something. So that explains the seemingly redundant Limerita. Still seems strange to me. Uh, Perla, regarding the discussion about um, the infrequency of EGG in English, and I commented, well, it would be more common in Italian. And Perla says, you're right. In Italian, we do have lots of words with the suffix E-G-G-I-A-R-E. -E, and it's used for verbs about fulfilling a specific action related to the noun or adjective attached to that suffix. So arpeggiare, arpeggiare means to play on the harp. Ondeggiare means to sway. Uh, onda meaning wave. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. So that's the etymology. Uh, festeggiare means to celebrate. Uh, festa relating to party. And then says, P.S. The I is silent. It's just there to, pr to produce the soft G sound because the letter J doesn't belong to the Italian alphabet. That's a good point. Um, although in English, when we say arpeggio, we do say arpeggio. So I'm sorry about that. If that is, uh, I apologize if that clashes with your Italian ears. And then we had actually a couple more comments on relating to those egg things. So let's see. Uh, my, Michelle McBride Charpentier added, all of these standard English words that included the EGG had a suffix like ED or ER. So they're sort of words that had just been turned into a noun or a past tense or something. So I got curious and skimmed an online Scrabble dictionary. The only standard word in English that contains egg, E-G-G, that isn't derived from egg itself or the result of one of these suffixes is beggar, B-E-G-G-A-R. And I would include reggae as well, even though it's from Jamaican English. I think that's fair enough. Um, oh, I thought there was also somebody who... Somebody pointed out that there's an example of an arpeggio in the music that I use on this channel. So that was just a little bit of music I um, I wrote a few months into doing the series, I think. And yes, it does indeed contain an arpeggio. So thank you to whoever pointed that out. I didn't think to use that as an example, um, but I forgot to uh, I forgot to bring that one out. So let's see, can I find that quickly? Uh, give that person credit or not. I guess I can't. Well, thank you to whoever that was. I apologize. Um, all right. And let's see, what else did we have? Uh, Spiral in your eyes points. This is a good point. I think it fits the theme that the egg 
rebuses were not symmetrical in the puzzle. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a very fun egg hunt. That's a very good point. I didn't think about that at all. I was wondering, maybe the eggs are symmetrically disposed and I can just go and fill them all in once I've found some of them. But yeah, that would make the that would defeat the purpose of the egg hunt. So yes, very well said. And uh, regarding the Beatles echoing at Abbey Road, Ben Ward says, I think the clue refers to the studios, Abbey Road Studios' famous echo chambers. They provided reverb before such an effect was easily created synthetically, and the Beatles made heavy use of these chambers while recording at Abbey Road. Yes, that's a very good point, and I didn't know it. I looked, I looked it up after the puzzle and, and learned that same fact. Um, yeah, really interesting. They have, they have uh, high-end echo chambers at Abbey Road Studios. And finally, our last egg-related point here. Delightfully, Edward R. Murrow, American uh, broadcast journalist who was referenced in yesterday's puzzle, his birth name was Egbert R. Murrow. Maybe a coincidence, but that might be the most hidden egg of the bunch. Very good. I hope that was intentional. A sly egg reference snuck in there. And that's it. That's it for today's puzzle, the Monday puzzle. I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday edition of the series. And uh, do subscribe to the channel. And I forget if I thanked everybody for uh, who has subscribed to the Patreon campaign, but if you did, thank you. Um, if you have subscribed to it, I do very much appreciate that direct support. All right, so I'll be back tomorrow for the Tuesday edition. I hope you will be there. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care.